Hi everyone, this is the Dispatch for Thursday, June 4th. We changed Psalms today and our Psalm is Psalm 8. This is probably one of the more familiar Psalms out of the Psalter. It's um, a language you might recognize. And I want to point out one element of it that, that you may or may not catch depending on your translation. I usually read from and work from the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV. That's the translation we use in worship. Um, and in the NRSV, in verse 4, it uses the word mortals. It says, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. And that word mortals in Hebrew is actually the phrase son of man. And the reason that the NRSV uses mortals is so that it's not gender specific, refer, as if it might be referring only to male human beings. So they use mortals to capture the generic uh, nature of that reference, because in Hebrew, son of man is a generic reference. It, it's, a, it's a sort of an idiomatic way to say a human being. Of course, Jesus takes up that language later when he calls himself the son of man. So we lose that connection, but know that it's there in verse 4. We see that language of son of man that will be later on the lips of Jesus himself. Our Old Testament passage is from Job chapter 38. Now this is just pulled straight out of context and that's one of the problems with reading through scripture the way that we're doing. Um, this is chapter 38. Obviously it's we have a lot of material leading up to this that we haven't looked at. The, uh, most of the book of Job is either Job um, lamenting that, that all that his, uh, his whole life has essentially been taken away from him. His family is dead. His, his livelihood is gone and he is uh, basically left with nothing. Um, so either we hear Job lamenting or we hear his good intentioned friends coming along and telling him what he should do, giving them what amounts to pretty lousy advice. Job refuses to curse God and yet refuses to uh, let God off the hook, uh, refuses to absolve God of this tragedy that has befallen him. And so now in chapter 38, at the very end of all of this, God comes and speaks. This is God speaking from the whirlwind. And God is full of uh, might and even bluster, basically saying Job to Job, who do you think you are uh, claiming that uh, I have any obligation to you or to anyone else for that matter? Were you there when I laid the foundations of the world? One of the really fascinating things about the book of Job is that even this depiction of God um, ends up feeling a bit unsatisfactory. This book is wrestling with the, the challenges of grappling with a good God and a world in which bad things happen to us. And really, at the end of the book, we're still left without clear resolution. And I think that's the intent of this book, is to highlight the challenge of, of uh, accounting with suffering in life and recognizing that there aren't easy answers. There aren't straightforward ways to solve that problem. So the words of God from the book of Job near the end, uh, highlighting the challenges of coming to terms with suffering in our lives. And then for the New Testament reading, we go to first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy is one of the pastoral epistles or pastoral letters. These come towards the end of the New Testament. And the author is urging Christians to join in suffering for the gospel and recognizes that this kind of suffering that is giving everything that we have without regard for consequence or, um, or, or sacrifice, giving everything that we have for the sake of the gospel, this is our holy calling. This is what God has, calling, has, has called us to do, to work for the kingdom, for the gospel, without shame and without fear. That's all for our readings. One quick reminder for you, as Sunday draws near, we are celebrating communion this Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. And so as we did last month, I, I want to encourage you to take some time and put some thought into your preparations. Since we can't be together in one space for this meal, we want to take extra effort in our homes to make the meal sacred. Maybe that means baking a loaf of bread yourself or buying a special loaf from the bakery that when you go to the store, um, uh, make your preparations uh, as special as you can to make sure that that meal feels special. I will be sending out the information that I had sent out last month to help guide you in your thinking and in your preparations. 
but I just want to make sure you keep that on your radar. Sunday is just a few days away. That's it for today. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.